Monday at South Charleston High School. It may look like just another start to the school week, but for Prevention Officer Lieutenant Stan Miller, it's Cyber Monday. Technology is great, but it's also horrible. Here and at schools around the region, time to catch up on potential problems presented during the weekend in an effort to stay ahead of cyberbullying. All the garbage that stirred up over the weekend through Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and all that comes to school on Monday because now all the kids are seeing each other instead of just tweeting to each other. Just as students gain access to the latest social media, law enforcement gains access to the latest social media monitoring systems like Topsy.com. And, you know, it has your up-to-date stuff. We monitor ourselves, too, you know, and I'm, I'm here to tell you, those people that are posting things, there are law enforcement officers that have fake pages with fake names, with fake students, with, and they are out there watching. This information gathered Monday morning may prevent a confrontation Monday afternoon. We'll call them in before they even know, you know, and say, what's going on, guys? Why are you all back and forth at each other? One of the key tactics used to curb cyberbullying is to bring the bully out of the darkness and glow of a computer screen and into a face-to-face -face situation with mediation where the text typed out becomes much more difficult to say in person. We may bring them in and then, you know, one or, one or the other or both parties get some form of discipline from the school and then it's handled that way. Student body president Eli Cook is days away from finishing his high school career and he looks back on his time spent in these halls seeing fellow students still learning to adapt to rapidly growing social media technology and its power. I think some students do and it's usually the bullies who know that they have that kind of impact but then there's, an also, there's also another situation where some students don't know and they post stuff that they're not supposed to but they're not thinking that can create such an impact. It's always the impact and its overall reach that catches many off guard. And sometimes we've had parents see their, their young um, adult at a, at a place where they shouldn't be participating in something they shouldn't be. And um, I guess students need to become more aware of what they really put out there as well. Assistant Principal Kim Williams puts the emphasis on early education and enforcing how bad cyberbullying can be to students at an early age. Yes, early on we have grade level assemblies and we educate students that they're, they're to be here bully free, harassment free, cyber bully free, whatever. There's a procedure in place that if it occurs that you know the student can report out, the parent can give us a phone call. We try to act immediately upon it to shut it down as quickly as possible. But students are educated about how to handle it early on. The team effort to educate and lessen cyberbullying continues from the administration. It hurts a lot of people in a split second. And staff. It's something that needs constant monitoring. Down through the student body. It, it is overwhelming at times. And their parents. Uh, parents said, oh, well, my daughter doesn't have Facebook. I said, but she has Twitter. She said, oh, no, she doesn't. I said, yes, yeah, she does. Right here it is. The cyber showdown carries on. But as Eli Cook gets ready to step away from his four-year home away from home, he hopes that just like that weird shirt you wore freshman year that's ended up at the bottom of your closet, cyberbullying will someday start to slip out of style. I think once it became new, everyone, a lot of people did the cyberbullying thing, but now it's, um, I think as we grow more in depth with it, I think it'll grow out of style, so I think people will learn not to do that. Tom Reader, 13 News, working for you.